Imagine diving into the mysterious worlds of Neptune and Uranus, far beyond our Earth where something truly extraordinary happens. Diamond rain. These distant ice giants, immense and shrouded in icy materials like water, ammonia and methane, hide secrets that feel like they're straight out of a science fiction story. Under their thick cloud layers, an incredible transformation occurs. Deep, about 5,000 miles beneath their surfaces, the pressure and temperature skyrocket, creating an environment so intense it's nothing like we see on our planet. Here, in these extreme depths, the simple methane that's abundant in their atmospheres starts breaking down. The intense conditions strip away hydrogen atoms, leaving behind a rich carbon residue. Now, this is where things get really wild. This carbon, under immense pressure and scorching temperatures, begins to form diamonds. Yes, actual diamonds, like those we cherish on Earth. But unlike our planet, where diamonds take billions of years to form deep in the crust, the process on Neptune and Uranus is far more dynamic, almost as if the planets are showing off their cosmic alchemy. Picture this. These newly minted diamonds, heavy and sparkling, can't stay floating in the gaseous layers. They start a slow, mesmerizing descent like a glittering otherworldly rain, cascading through the atmosphere. This journey is not quick, it spans thousands of years. As they fall, these diamonds likely melt, eventually forming a liquid diamond layer deep within these mysterious worlds. Now let's talk about Io, one of Jupiter's moons, and trust me, it's nothing like the calm, serene moons we often picture. Io is like the wild child of the solar system's moons, showing off an extreme landscape that's hard to believe. First off, Io is the most volcanically active place in our solar system. Imagine hundreds of volcanoes, some blasting lava fountains as high as 250 miles into space. These eruptions are so massive, we can actually see them from Earth with powerful telescopes. It's like Io is putting on a fireworks display for the entire solar system to see. But why is Io so fiery and alive? It's all because of a cosmic tug of war. Io is caught in a gravitational battle between the massive Jupiter and its neighboring moons, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto. This creates something called tidal heating. Think of it like Io being constantly squished and stretched by these immense gravitational forces, generating a crazy amount of heat inside. This heat melts Io's insides, turning them into magma. This magma then bursts out through the surface, creating those mind-blowing volcanic eruptions. Because of this, Io's surface is always changing, covered in sulfur that paints it in an array of colors, making it one of the most stunning objects out there. Here's another fascinating thing. Unlike other moons and planets littered with craters from cosmic impacts, Io's surface is almost free of them. Its relentless volcanic activity keeps resurfacing the moon, wiping away any craters before they can leave a lasting mark. And there's more. Io's wild nature doesn't just stay on Io. It throws out about a ton of volcanic gases into space every second, mostly sulfur dioxide. These gases get ionized and form a plasma torus around Jupiter, affecting its magnetosphere. It's like Io is not just an active moon, it's an active player in Jupiter's space environment. Moving on to black holes, now here's a topic that's as mysterious as it is fascinating. These cosmic oddities are not just objects in space, they're like riddles wrapped in enigmas, challenging everything we think we know about the universe. So how do black holes come into existence? Well, they're often born from the remains of a massive star that has finished its life cycle. Picture a star, much bigger than our sun, running out of nuclear fuel. Without this fuel, the star can't fight against its own gravity and collapses dramatically. Sometimes this collapse is so intense it leads to a supernova, an epic cosmic explosion. The core that's left behind can be squished into an infinitely dense point called a singularity, where all its mass is crammed into an almost unimaginably small space. Now, let's talk about the event horizon, the star of the black hole show. This isn't a physical surface, but rather a theoretical boundary. It's like the point of no return. Once something, even light, crosses this boundary, it's game over. There's no escaping the black hole's gravitational pull. Everything gets sucked in towards the singularity. Black holes have some pretty wild properties. They've got mass and some can have charge and spin. They're like cosmic magicians bending light and time around them. This leads to some incredible phenomena, like gravitational lensing, where the black hole bends light from objects behind it, creating these amazing visual effects like rings or multiple images of the same astronomical object. 
Inside the event horizon is where things get really tricky. Our current understanding of physics just breaks down there. It's like the laws of the universe just throw their hands up and say, we're out. We think quantum effects are significant here, but without a complete theory of quantum gravity, it's still a big question mark. Black holes aren't all the same size either. There are stellar black holes, which are pretty common and formed from stars. Then there are the supermassive black holes, which are millions to billions of times more massive than our sun. These behemoths lurk in the centers of most galaxies, including our own Milky Way. And let's not forget the theoretical microscopic black holes, which might have formed in the early universe. The sun, our very own star, is a powerhouse of incredible proportions, and its core is where the magic really happens. This isn't just any star, it's a G-type main sequence star, the center of our solar system, and the key to life on Earth. Now let's zoom into the core of the Sun. This is the heart of the star, extending up to about a quarter of its radius. And get this, the temperature here is a staggering 15 million degrees Celsius. That's 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure is equally mind-blowing, about 250 billion times what we experience on Earth's surface. Imagine the weight of an entire mountain concentrated on a single point, and you're still not even close. In this extreme environment, something truly amazing happens, nuclear fusion. It's like a cosmic dance where hydrogen nuclei come together to form helium. This process isn't just a spectacle, it's the sun's powerhouse, releasing an enormous amount of energy. The core uses what's called the proton-proton chain reaction. It's like a cosmic recipe. Take four hydrogen nuclei, combine them, and voila, you get one helium nucleus, along with a couple of positrons, neutrinos, and a burst of energy in the form of gamma rays. Now this energy doesn't just jump from the core to us. It's a slow journey, taking potentially millions of years to travel from the core to the sun's surface. It moves through the radiative zone, then the convective zone, before finally reaching the photosphere. That's the sun's surface, and from there, it's beamed out into space as the sunlight that reaches our planet. And let's not forget about the solar neutrinos. These little guys are byproducts of the nuclear fusion in the sun's core. Neutrinos are like the ninjas of particles. They barely interact with anything, slicing through the sun's layers and space to reach Earth in just over eight minutes. They're super important because they give us direct evidence of what's going on in the sun's core. The idea of parallel universes, or the multiverse, is like something straight out of a science fiction movie, but it's actually a topic that keeps scientists and cosmologists up at night. This concept takes us way beyond the universe we know and love, into realms that seriously mess with our heads and our understanding of reality. Let's dive into quantum mechanics first. This branch of physics is already weird enough with its probabilities and particles being in two states at once. Think about the famous Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, a cat in a box that's both alive and dead until you open the box. Quantum mechanics suggest that each possibility could be happening in its own separate universe. Mind-blowing, right? Then there's string theory. This theory is like the Swiss army knife of physics, trying to mesh together gravity and quantum physics. It proposes extra dimensions beyond the four we know. You know, the three dimensions of space plus time. In string theory, these extra dimensions could be all curled up in ways we can't see, potentially creating a crazy number of different universes in a higher dimensional space. Now let's talk about cosmic inflation. This is the idea that the universe expanded super fast right after the Big Bang. According to this theory, different parts of space stopped inflating at different times, creating these bubble universes. Our universe might just be one bubble in a cosmic foam bath of universes, each with its own set of rules and constants. And get this, theorists have come up with different types of multiverses. There's the level I multiverse, where there's just more space than we can see. And this space might have other regions similar to our observable universe. Then there's the level two multiverse, with universes that have different physical constants, basically universes playing by different rules. Level 3 is like the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics on steroids, with every possible outcome creating a new universe. And level 4, that's where different universes have entirely different fundamental physical laws. Have you ever thought about galaxies zooming away from us in space? It's a mind-bending concept that's at the heart of modern cosmology, and it really shakes up our understanding of the universe. Let's rewind to the 1920s when a guy named Edwin Hubble made a groundbreaking observation. He noticed that galaxies seem to be moving away from us. But here's the kicker. 
the farther away a galaxy was, the faster it was receding. This discovery, now known as Hubble's Law, was our first real clue that the universe is expanding. This expansion is something we observe through what's called the redshift of light. Imagine a galaxy moving away from us. The light it emits gets stretched, making it look redder than it actually is. The more red shifted the light, the farther away the galaxy is, and it tells us just how fast the universe is expanding. But wait, it gets even wilder. In the late 1990s, astronomers studying distant supernova found out that this expansion isn't just happening, it's accelerating. This revelation was a real head-scratcher. It turns out this acceleration is due to something called dark energy, which makes up about 68% of the total energy in the universe. This stuff is like the anti-gravity, pushing things apart instead of pulling them together. Now what does all this mean for the future of the universe? If this expansion keeps up, we could be headed for what's called the Big Freeze, or heat death. This is a scenario where the universe keeps expanding, galaxies drift further apart, and everything winds down to a cold, sparse, and dark state. So when we talk about parallel universes and our universe getting bigger and bigger, we're really at the forefront of cosmic exploration. These ideas aren't just cool topics for sci-fi movies. They're real, mind-blowing concepts that challenge how we see reality and are hot topics in the world of cosmology. The universe is a vast, mysterious place, and we're just beginning to uncover its secrets. And as always, we hope you enjoyed our video today. Thanks for watching.